It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals, and it's coming up next. With the Ohio River and the hills of Kentucky just to our right, we welcome you in to Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. Straight ahead, a rematch of Super Bowl 56, and it should be a good one, as it'll be the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But, Charles, a lot of people see these Bengals as legitimate contenders to get to the Super Bowl. And remember, they got there just two years ago. What do they need to do to get back? Well, we know how well positioned they are on offense, partner, because they have one of the best quarterbacks in the game and a lot of firepower to go with it. But how about what they did in the draft this year? A lot of capital expended on the defensive side of the ball, trying to slow down some of the other top contenders. Then for the visiting Rams, you know, they found out the hard way that you need a lot of good fortune when you win a Super Bowl title. And when you don't get that good fortune as they didn't last year, things can crash down to earth in a hurry. And none of us really saw this coming. Remember, they were 12 and 5 the year they won the Super Bowl, won 5 and 12 last year. Somehow I think this Rams team is better than what we saw last season, adding in a lot of new pieces in order to try and get back to the top of the NFC West. We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So here are the Rams set to go to work on offense, and they're led by a man who topped the 50,000-yard mark in passing for his career a season ago. In year 15 now, here's Matthew Stafford. Stafford, the Rams won it all in Super Bowl 56, but last season was a stark contrast to that. The Rams need their quarterback to recapture his form from two seasons ago to help spark another postseason run. Right to the air, here's Stafford. This will be incomplete. Oh, a dream chance for a D lineman, but he couldn't pull that one in. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. On second down, Evans looking for space. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Back to throw, Stafford. Into the hands of Skowanek. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. A gain of four, not enough. And it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. So on fourth down, on is Ethan Evans to punt for the Rams. Back deep for Cincinnati, the rookie Charlie Jones. Fielded just inside the 30. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Bengals take over first and 10. And the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helming the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year, which matched the team record, and they made a conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. From the 41, here's a second and seven. 
play action. It's Burrow. Man open. That's Jamar Chase complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The LSU connection. Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Mixon with a first down carry. Down to about the 45. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working, but how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. T. Higgins, 48 yards. And the Bengals will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, they don't like that at all, <laughs> right? This is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, you're supposed to take advantage of on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us to rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. to the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good, three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet, and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> they will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Stafford now to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up a third down. Stafford. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. First and ten, it's Evans. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards, and that'll bring up second down. Up 
From the 46, here's second down and seven. Now Stafford. Going to be taken in here by Nakua. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Here is third down and four. Here's Stafford. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 38-yard line. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw? Maybe the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. They'll run on first down with Evans. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Is the target incomplete. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this will stay at a seven-point game. So an eight-play drive gets him down there, but play number nine, that winds up a missed field goal. And they definitely moved the ball well. That's a drive where you hate to come away with nothing. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. play action it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect Tyler Boyd the intended receiver and now it's second down we're going to give this to Mixon Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. They go play action with Burrow. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Burrow will throw. This goes out wide for Nixon. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 23 yards to pick up there. 
Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. The good signal calls would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Again, it's Burrow on second and ten. Trying to get it to Chase, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Darian Kendrick. And the Rams are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Now the Rams' offense getting the football back. Yeah, they were in field goal range last time out, but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 16. After the interception, here's Stafford. To the right, and Skoranek is there. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Off a of play action. Here's Stafford. Complete. Jefferson the target. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll make it second down. A gain of four. It's now the second and six at the 47 yard line. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Got a man open. It's Tyler Higby. And he'll take this from 147 yard line to the other. A gain of six. Here's third and a few inches. They'll try and run for it with Evans. And he's taken down inside the 30. It'll be a first down for the Rams there on a pickup of 18. It's a big place in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. They'll go right back to Evans here on first down to the 27 yard line. Here's a second and eight. Again, a run with Evans. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Evans. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Zach Evans 
from 17 yards out. And the Rams are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Charlie Jones now from his end zone. And yeah, he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Cincinnati set to take over once again. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 seven, seven the score as they begin first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Running left, it's Mixon. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. 35 yards the game there. Another first down as well. And that's a big time run. Lightning in a bottle, forget it. He exploded out of the bottle for that type of a pickup. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Here's Burrow. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 more yards there and another first down. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end, complete. That'll give him eight that time, and that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one or what? <laughs> They'd gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Well, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. To mix it on the check down. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Now that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. I think the best offenses love to give the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice... That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the 
Bengals have taken the lead. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really serving the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hands, knows where he's going, just puts it to the outside. Touchdown. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to seven. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? And they'll begin on the ground here with Evans. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Well, CD, a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Stafford. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked by Logan Wilson. And the Bengals will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. A lot of bodies there in the middle of the field, and that one intercepted. Yeah, he's looking for his tight end running a drag route across the field, and normally you'd like him to work a little bit further outside. Here the throw's a little early, and it winds up in the hands of the defender. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six of six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate, the receivers catch it, the ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, ball never hits the ground there either. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. The all-everything defensive tackle, Aaron Donald, the one who made the play there. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. Connecting on the out route here. said and done. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game, and he's got a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now Burrow on first down. And that one complete once again to Higgins. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On second down, here's Mixon. Maybe the slip by. We're inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. And the offense 
defense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. The result, only four yards there on the play. Third and seven now. Play action, it's Burrow. Throwing for Smith on the out route and it's caught. Yeah, boy, he had the marker square in his sights, but a good tackle's gonna leave him about a yard or so short. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. From here, this would have been a 48-yarder, but no, they're gonna go for it. They'll try and throw for it with Burrow. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And the Rams are going to take possession of the turnover on downs. So they'll trudge off the field with a bitter taste in their mouths after that failed fourth down conversion. Yeah, there'll be a lot of analysis there on the sidelines. Was it the right call? Was it, the, was it against the right defense? Should they have even gone for it at all? Will that change what they do going forward in this game? A lot of questions to be answered by them. The defense doesn't really care. They're like, <laughs> bring it on again. We'll stop you the next time, too. They start the drive with Evans to about the 33-yard line. From the 33, here's second down and eight. They'll go again here with Evans. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 98 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme, when you have a blocker on a defender and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole and just go, it's sometimes a thing of beauty. And he's gonna take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. This one brought in by Jefferson. Two yards on the pickup there. And it brings up third and five now. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. And it's going to be knocked away and incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Ethan Evans on down a punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. A kind of a lucky break on the prior drive, Charles. The turnover on downs that the offense had didn't come back to bite them after the other side, their defense came through and was able to hold them without any points. I would agree with you, partner. A little bit of a lucky break indeed, but you know what they'd say to us. No luck, just pure skill. We rose to the challenge and we didn't permit a score. That's how we roll. Well, I'm kind of curious, Charles, if they might temper their aggressiveness now offensively if they get in that fourth down spot again. Yeah, one would think so, but maybe because they held them, they might go for it again. 
Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man to play. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. The defense shaking their heads, not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Smith. So the completion good for seven there, and that will bring up second down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. Here's second and three. Burrow will throw. Got a man open, it's Chase. And Chase gonna pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this across the 50 to the 49. First down, here's Burrow. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sacked back at about the 43-yard line. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. Donald just continues to astound with plays like that. Last year, his ninth season in the NFL, and the first time since his rookie year, he wasn't voted an All-Pro. Yet even in just 11 games, had five sacks and made the Pro Bowl. Simply incredible. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Throwing there, but this pass is gonna wind up incomplete. It's just been all out pressure on this drive. They've already sacked him a couple of times, and now here, he's just forced to chuck this one away. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Mix it up the middle. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. Well, the Rams going to take over late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. First and ten, Stafford. Pass complete there to Nakua. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Stafford barking out signals and trying to get his guys set quickly.
They'll throw now on the final play. To the right, and Skoranek is there. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. The Bengals got a strong performance in that first half by Joey B, their quarterback, Joe Burrow. He fired his guys into the lead with two first-half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. touchdown ball game 14-7 our scores we get back at it on EA Sports here's Jones to bring it out of the end zone and he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee maybe a yard shy of there at the 24 well, the Bengal offense ready to go to begin this third quarter and they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few right. more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Mixon will get it to start the second half. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Now it's Burrow. He gets this one to Boyd. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Heavy set out there on third and one. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Here's second and ten. Now Burrow. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Try to take a shot, but it's third down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Here's Burrow. Throw out wide is incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. 
It's taken to the 26. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. Play action, Stafford. And this one too low. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Now it's second and 10. Now it's Stafford. And a catch right side by Evans. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. From the gun, here's Stafford. midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down 21 yards there on third down and it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far they haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected but this is a good pickup here for the first down so they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 42 yard line straight ahead it's Evans down inside the 40 Second and seven. Now Stafford. Going to be taken in here by Nakua. He'll be hit down at the 33. Five yards on the play. Try and run for this with Evans. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. On second down, a run with Evans. And for one of the few times here today, this one's not going to go anywhere. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And incomplete on the deep ball. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Now Brett Maher for the field goal try. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. Maher able to put this one through, and they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. 
So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you'll see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still, they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead. If they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 26. He'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. And Chase gonna pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this up past the 40. Fifth catch of the afternoon and that gives him a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Mixon with a first down carry. Gets past one man. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down, but a nice little gain. 64 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now second and three. In motion left is Higgins. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. Ten yards there on a Bengal first. A solid pick up there by Mixon. And when he's running it this way, the Cincinnati offense takes on an extra dimension. They love to run the football and shut people down with Mixon carrying the load. Now Burrow on first down. A quick throw there he is incomplete. Tight end Irv Smith, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Now it's Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Rams 26. And they'll get 14 yards out of it and a fresh set of downs. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because 
They've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. On second down, here's Burrow. He completes it to Burrow. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. I'll tell you what, this offense has been a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Toward the pylon, caught! And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. And they ran just a little underneath route here on first and goal, but there's really not a whole lot of room to operate this close to the goal line. He's just not able to get loose after the catch. Mixon, no signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. They try to get the nose of the football across to no avail, and now it's third and goal. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Burrow looking to pass. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Jamar Chase, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bengals are able to widen their advantage. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes it a 21 to 10 game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10, right at the 30. They'll begin on the ground with Evans. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. He continues to be dominant running the football. I mean, keep feeding him, right? Yeah, you should because what he's put up already is really like a two-game total. Give him a lot of credit, but give the rest of the offense credit as well. The big guys up front and the receivers on the perimeter, everyone's getting involved blocking people downfield. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And 22 more yards there and another first down. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 down at the 33. Here's Stafford. Complete Jefferson the target. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. On first and 10, it's Evans. And he'll go down, and that will do it. 
the third quarter of action. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now it's Stafford off the bootleg. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Van Jefferson was the intended receiver, but it'll be second and goal. Evans. He's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Stafford's going to try and throw for it. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. this across the 20 but not much further as he's dropped at the 23 yard line so now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago first downs a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10 Side complete. That's Boyd. Call it a gain of a yard at its second down. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. Open man is Higgins. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Bengals on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. Here it's third and three. He's got his target. That's complete. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That's a first down with a cherry on top. 41 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection... That's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. They will throw on first down with Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. Try to run inside, but nothing there. 
Curtis Jones there for the tackle. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. So a pressure spot here for Evan McPherson. This to put him a touchdown and a two-point conversion up. McPherson's kick is good, and that'll push the lead up to eight. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Williams to return. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And remember, despite giving up the field goal, this is still a one-score game. They're in need of the touchdown and a two-point conversion. A field goal on this drive likely doesn't do them much good. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one-score game. First and ten here. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. The stop for no gain brings up second and ten from the 20. Throwing is Stafford. Pass complete there to Nakua. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. They'll run on first down with Evans. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no gain. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it. You're exactly right. Stafford. To the right side and complete. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. We have seen this before. And we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They'll be hoping to work a little clock and try to add on to this slim fourth quarter lead. But whatever happens on this drive, certainly a huge fumble recovery by their defense at this juncture. Now, Burrow on first down, and he'll 
fine chase on the right side complete. But there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. And they'll come up second and seven. Now Burrow. Throwing for Smith on the out route, and it's caught. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So five yards here, five on the play. And now that sets up third and two. Open man is Chase complete. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. First down would have been nice, but now you get to kick the field goal, still go up two scores. They tried to get it, though, didn't they? Through the pass, got the completion just short of the first down, but you're exactly right. Run the field goal unit out there, kick it, put it through the post, go up two scores. They'll run with Mixon. Description right there, right? Fourth and short. They got that. No problem. Let's go ahead and get the rest of it. Finish it off in the end zone. Touchdown. Everyone goes away happy on that one. Extra point by McPherson. Up and good. And the lead is up to 15 now. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Williams now on the return, taking it about the one. Fights forward at the 20, and his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The football going back to the Rams now. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Short throw, it's Higby. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. On second down, Evans looking for space, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw pulled in by Atwell here. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Now Stafford, throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that'll leave them with a third and two. And we're definitely getting towards the point of the game where not getting a lot of yards is secondary to keeping the clock moving. I mean, to me, that's a double win defensively. Short gain and some more time off the clock. The offense on third down, five out of nine thus far. 
This time they face a third and two. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 32-yard line. It was third and short, and they go flying past the marker for a gain of nearly 30 yards. Good yardage on the completion there, and when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Back-to-back -back plays of right around 30 yards, and the field position has totally been flipped. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Stafford. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Zach Evans from four yards out. And the Rams are able to cut into that deficit. So this is now a nine-point difference. You figure the book here says kick the extra point, make it a one-score game. Now, you and I have seen coaches get overly aggressive in this spot, but I agree with you. Kick it here and get back within a score. Extra point by Moore, up and good, as this gets him back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. Oh, the return is Jones from the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Again, it's Mixon. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So now Stafford and the Rams down by eight. A little under a minute 50 remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Stafford. 
to the sideline and incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Stafford. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Now it's Stafford. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Fourth down, ten yards to go. Desperation time for Stafford on fourth down. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And barring mistakes, they should be able to kneel this one out and finish it off. And there's only one timeout remaining on the defensive side of the ball, so that doesn't really come into play either. Two hands on the football here as they run on first down. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers, and then a quick slam or something like that. Well, big game there, and that should certainly be enough to put this one in the win column. And this defense, they needed that one more stop to have any chance, but that completion, that's likely going to seal their fate. And you could hear it in your voice, that one more <laughs> stop. I feel their pain. Oh, it was so important. They just didn't get it done. Wow, what a way to finish this one off. So it's the Bengals who come away with a win. And the man leading the way was their quarterback, CD. That's Joe Burrow. Yeah, he was in complete control of this offense. He had three touchdown passes on the afternoon. And to be honest, he really made it look easy out there. 